Hi everyone, I have finished reading your papers on teamwork and have posted feedback for you on your rubric inside of Blackboard. would encourage you to go through that, um, the feedback, and see if you have any questions. The, the general concept of teamwork feels very familiar to most of us. We've all been on some kind of team in our life, so I think this is a, comp, a concept that we feel pretty fluid with. This week's assignment asked you to synthesize your reading from your textbooks with your professional practice and when you synthesize information you're taking information from two different places and you're putting them together to make one fluid um, explanation or dialogue about a topic so many of you did really well with that and I was very impressed with it um, the the Biblical verse that was most commonly cited was Proverbs 27, 17, and it's the one that talks about iron sharpens iron, and no one person sharpens another. I think it's important for us to always remember that we are stronger when we are with a team, and that our, our strengths and our weaknesses balance out within a team dynamic. So I think the Proverbs 27, 17 does a really nice job of, of reminding us of that. Um, when... Exploring the, the detractors of cohesive teamwork, your classmate Alex did a really nice job um, when Alex wrote, uh, I have often seen in many meetings how a group, ration, group rationalizes and agrees with the suggestions from a senior person to maintain unit cohesion. Introducing the leadership of my workplace to group think and ways to overcome group thinking can help hospital managers perform better. Better performance for managers will translate to better collaboration and support the delivery of outstanding care. I love that Alex brought this up because what Alex is getting at is being courageous in a meeting and actually providing a dissenting idea or a different idea than what the most senior person in the group offers. Um, sometimes we want to be conflict avoidant. Sometimes we feel coerced because the power structure in the room is different. But I love the idea that, that you have to be a leader with courage and be brave in those situations when it's appropriate, when it's necessary, to share a different idea or a different perspective to avoid falling into groupthink type of behavior. And what's fabulous about this is that courage was your virtue this week. Um, and I do think that you need courage. This is a good example of when you need to be courageous. Your classmate Michelle also um, discussed an, another detractor, and Michelle wrote, Another pitfall that must be overcome for effective teams is the false belief that everyone wants to work with the team. While healthcare is becoming a very team-oriented profession, there are still people that would rather work independently and either do not or don't do not want or do not know how to work effectively on a team. Um, and she cites your, your textbook in, in supporting that. And I completely agree. Um, and I think it's okay that sometimes we don't want to be on a team. Sometimes we want to work alone. Sometimes we want to be autonomous in our decision making. I think that's okay. I think we also need to be thoughtful about the voices of people who, for multiple reasons, struggle with team dynamics or struggle feeling comfortable in a team. Um, some of our most introverted employees, the ones that are introspective and quiet natured, have fabulous insights and wonderful ideas but they have a hard time articulate, articulating that in a group setting. So if you do group meetings, think about how do you assure that everybody here has a voice, even if they're not comfortable articulating that in a group dynamic? Um, do you give them a link after the meeting to go to and fill out their ideas? Or do you give them all little sheets of paper that say, you know, what was the one idea you had during the meeting, but you didn't feel comfortable expressing or, or that you want to quietly tell me? Um, give those people who either aren't really excited about teamwork or have different personalities and they struggle with teamwork, give them a way to have a voice. And I love that Michelle addressed that. Um, and that doesn't mean that, that everybody gets out of jail free, that, that you don't have to be on a group just because you don't like it. We all have to play together. But I do think we have to have some flexibility and understanding that not everybody is really into group work. Um, from an APA standpoint, you guys are doing a fantastic job. It is so great that I can really focus on your content and spend less time focusing on APA formatting issues. A reminder, 
at a graduate level. You should never be turning in a paper that doesn't have level headings. And the vast majority of your papers are going to need level headings 1 and level 2. Make sure you know the difference between level 1 and 2. Your final paper should have level 1, 2, and 3. The complex papers that have lots of ideas in them are, are better expressed with better structure when you use the heading system. So at this point, be learning and focusing on fine-tuning the use of level 1 and 2. Anticipate that week 8's paper is going to have level 1, 2, and 3. Feeling really brave, you can do 4 as well, but I don't expect to see 4. Um, I think, oh, the running head. The running head of the top of your paper, it's the, the heading that's up on the top left on page one and then runs through the rest of your paper. Folks, it needs to be an abbreviated topic from your paper. Avoid taking the entire name of your paper and putting it as your running head. It crowds up that top header and it's unnecessary. The idea is to create a quick index for somebody to know what's this paper about. Um, if, you've, if you've titled your paper Reflective Exercise 1, it's not terribly creative, but that's pretty succinct. That would be okay to put up in your running header. But this week's heading of the paper was pretty long. Shorten it up two, three words that basically give you just a brief snapshot of what's in this paper so that people have a better way of indexing your work. Um, but aside from those two things, I think you guys were looking great. Next week, you've got your paper that's going to require you to develop a schematic for a professional practice model. Don't panic. Um, the perfect professional practice model schematic is going to give you a chance to use your the tools that are in Word that allow you to use um, inserting figures and, and um, formulas. So practice with that. Be very thoughtful about your schematic and make sure that it is presented in a professional way and that you use some creativity. This is a real opportunity for you to demonstrate um, that you're putting all the pieces together and that you can be creative. Um, and know that I'm looking for you to be thinking out of the box and, and to use some creativity. Ask yourself if Dr. Hudgens copy and pasted my schematic and put it on a PowerPoint, would I, and publicly showed it, um, would I be proud of this? Would I be pleased with other people have seen my work? So please be thoughtful about that. Um, I think that wraps everything up this week. I'm going to go uh, try to get my puppy to stop running around chasing her bone and feed her dinner. I hope you guys are well. Know that I'm here. We're wrapping up the course. You've only got a little, a few more weeks and, and you're home free. Um, know that I'm here. Touch base if you have questions. If you read my feedback and it's unclear or you want to discuss it, touch base. Um, I'm, I'm happy to discuss it and provide additional feedback or, or talk you through it. I hope you guys stay warm and dry. It's raining here in Roanoke, so I hope you guys are dry. Y'all take care.